So we're going to use this as an initial compressor. Um, we're not going to try and squash the heck out of it. We're only going to go for like a few dB of gain reduction. I know the show what I wanted all the days of my life. Hey guys, Nitro X here with another video on the Reason YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be going over some basic mixing principles and applying some mixing techniques within Reason. So get ready to level up your music production game and let's dive in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go over is EQ. So let's get a basic understanding of EQ for some of you who might not be familiar with it. And then we're gonna move on to EQing a vocal. So each EQ is different, but you're gonna have three parameters on an EQ. So there's cut boost, Q slash bandwidth, and then frequency sweep. A cut boost essentially just adjusts the volume of the frequency bandwidth that it is predefined to or that you can select. So, for example, this high shelf has a select frequency bandwidth, um, but you can select the frequency. So it's either a high shelf or you can turn on bell. You can't adjust this bandwidth. However, you can then have a little more control in terms of the specific frequency you're trying to attenuate or boost. It's the same thing with the low shelf. It is also a shelf EQ that can be turned on to have a tighter bandwidth, but the bandwidth is not adjustable. Now for the mid bands, we have a new function called Q, uh, also known as the bandwidth that I was talking about. So this has a cut boost function, a frequency sweep, and a Q value. Now this Q value only goes so small until you select E mode. Once you turn on E mode, you see it can go even smaller compared to when E mode is off. Then for our low mid band, it's the exact same functionality, same three parameters. So once you kind of get a grasp on what each of those does, I will talk about how I implement them when I'm EQing something. So let's go EQ a vocal. All right, so I got the vocal pulled up here. Um, my friend Adam Paddock sang this one. Uh, he's got a very deep, strong, soulful voice, and I don't want to do too much to it to ruin that tone, but it is a hard-hitting EDM mix, so we are going to have to do a lot of drastic processing on it. Um, however, with this EQ, I'm just going to do a light EQ soloed to get rid of any problems I hear and try and do a general enhancement and then we'll go from there. What so I'm hearing a problem already right here and you can see it's peaking a lot. I know the show what I wanted all the day. So I'm doing a tight Q value here. Whenever you're trying to deal with specific frequencies, always going to want to use a tight Q value and tone shaping. You're going to want a little bit of a wider EQ and then I'm going to apply high pass filter, which filters out all the low frequencies up to the point of the high pass filter at different curves. So there's a nice visual representation here on this graph with the high pass filter. You always want to throw one on absolutely everything except for, you know, your sub bass just to prevent subsonic distortion and then i'm not going to go too high here for a male vocal usually i am going to be going between like 50 and 150 hertz for a deep male vocal but uh, he's singing a bit higher so i can go a bit higher however i want to increase some of the tone in his voice i'm going to bring it up a little bit i know the show what i wanted all the i'm actually turned low shelf on for this days of my life I know the show what I wanted all and then I'm bring this down a bit more tighter Q. I'm just really not liking that frequency there and then bringing up the high band as well on the shelf and that's just gonna kind of help boost the high end give it a little bit more light airiness in the vocal all the days of my life. so good start let's move on to compression So for compression, there are five important terms to understand when it comes to the compressor's controls. So first off, we have threshold. So right here in the Reason compressor, you will see the threshold right here. This basically tells us 
that when the volume is hitting a certain level, then the compressor is going to engage. And what a compressor does is just duck that signal based on the other parameters that we have on a compressor. Next up will be the attack. This controls how fast the compressor acts on a signal when it goes over the threshold. In terms of attack uh, on the Reason compressor, you don't have a lot to work with here. We just have a fast. Then next up will be the release function. This determines how quickly the compression ends. So if you have a longer release function, what's gonna happen is the compressor is gonna keep pushing it down. And then when the signal hits the threshold again, the compressor is still staying there. So it's just, it can have constant gain reduction if you have lots of peaks. Then next up we have ratio right here. This is actually going to be the last one on this compressor to cover. Um, and the ratio basically determines how hard the signal is getting turned down, how much the compressor reduces loudness when it hits the threshold. So for example, if we go to a two to one ratio right here, what's gonna happen is the signal exceeding the ratio by two decibels gets reduced to one dB for a ratio that increases. It's basically going to compress it harder, less. So if we're starting with like one to one, it's not compressing it at all. As well, some compressors have what's called a knee um, that softens the hit of the compression a little bit. If you have a hard knee, it's going to really sound like it's smushing the signal. But if you have a softer knee, it's gonna have a more of a gentle compression. Another thing to remember with compression is always try and do multiple stages of light compression. Uh, throughout your signal chain. It'll help a lot with not making it sound unnatural. So we're gonna use this as an initial compressor. Um, we're not gonna try and squash the heck out of it. We're only gonna go for like a few dB of gain reduction. I know the show what I wanted all the days of my life. I know the show what I wanted all the days of my life. I know the show. Pretty subtle right now, but I'm pretty happy with that. Another thing I want to mention too is your signal path within your channel strip. So you need to make sure that this is in the right order. Now, the interesting thing for this is I have auto tune on here. So I would ideally like to have auto tune before my compressor and EQ, but it's not a huge deal. I'm going to switch that. Um, dynamics post EQ. I'm doing that because I'm doing a boost on that EQ and I want to compress what I did on the EQ. When you compress after an EQ, it's always going to accentuate the things you boosted and cut. From here, I'm going to go out and add some more compression. I often don't add OTT to vocals. However, on this song, because of how aggressive the drop is and the, how loud the vocals need to be, I'm going to use some OTT. So let's just spend a few minutes trying to dial in this vocal. So see right there, I don't want the compression to be hitting too fast. So we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna do a little high end boost. Right. That sounds good like that. I'm gonna do additional EQ here quickly. I'm gonna add some presence up here. I'm gonna put a little bit of dynamic compression on it. Perfect. Then I always add some fresh air by Slate Digital. And then you're gonna want, like I said, to add some harmonics processing. So a great free saturation um, is the soft tube saturation knob. It comes as a rack extension. Then um, I'm going to add some soothe just to clean up anything that is too strong. I'm just gonna add it at the end of the chain here. I know the show what I want it all. Days of my I noticed there's a buildup right kind of around 2K that I was dealing with before. Essentially soothe just does some dynamic compression. Um, I can't recommend it enough. It's amazing. And then after that, I'm probably gonna add a little bit of tape um, on there for a little more presence and uh, some analog sound. I love using this preset, the male vocal preset. It's just such a good starting point. Oh, what I wanted all the days of my life. 
Now we have this really thick, saturated vocal that should sit nice in our mix. All right, so we are done processing the vocal. So we're gonna get into adding some effects onto it. The first thing I'm gonna show you guys that I've been doing lately is a side-chained reverb send. So how you're gonna do that is on your effects return. You can hit edit and uh, default in reason. There's an RV7000 reverb just popped in there, uh, but we're gonna add a new one in here. And so if you were to add some below, it's just gonna add them down this list here on the side. So five, six, seven, eight, it's gonna continue as you add devices right here. Um, and then the reverb patch I love using uh, for this and just overall as a vocal reverb is uh, the Vox Long Plate or the long tail is really good as well. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my Reason devices and I'm gonna hold shift. This is really important, you hold shift and I'm gonna drag in my channel dynamics and then hold shift and drag in a channel EQ and then flip the rack. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just route the channel output. This is what's sending back in as your effects return. And then you're gonna route that to the output of the EQ uh, you can put the EQ before the channel dynamics. You can put it before the reverb. It can really be anywhere. I prefer it after the reverb, but it gives you a little more uh, flexibility to shape the tone of the reverb. And then drag your audio output into the input of the dynamics, output into input. Now we're all patched up here. I'm gonna hold shift and select from the bottom to the top of these three devices, right click and hit combine. So it's gonna put it into a combinator patch. So that way, once we get this all set up, you'll be able to save it, which is what I recommend doing and recall it on future projects when you're creating a vocal reverb send. And then you can drag whatever reverb of your choosing onto this device right here. And then boom, you've got yourself a side chain reverb patch that's ready to go. So then what we're gonna do is we have to take our vocal here going to flip the rack again by hitting tab on uh, your keyboard and then drag the parallel pre out into the sidechain input on the channel dynamics. It's going to reduce this signal based on the dynamics of the sidechain signal. So we're going to hit active to turn the sidechain on and then we're going to just send a little reverb in here. I'm going to overdo it for now so you can hear the effect of what the compressor sidechain is doing. What I wanted all the days of my life. Here it came back in at the end. So essentially how you want to adjust this is get a lot of gain or reduction almost to the red. Um, and then you can adjust your release depending on how fast your singer is singing. And basically that's gonna just set when that reverb is gonna kick in after they're done singing a word. I know the show word. So you can hear it's coming in and out every time he finishes a word. But if we, as we turn it up, it's not gonna come in until like the very end. I know the show word. I want it all the days of my life. Then if you're feeling like it uh, needs a faster attack to the duck, then you can turn the fast attack on. No, the show what I wanted all the days of my life. But then it can make it sound really choppy. So I normally don't turn the fast attack on when doing this technique. So then when that's done, I quickly just throw a high pass filter on the reverb at about 300 Hertz, just to cut out all that muddiness. If you want to tone shape your reverb based on your vocalist a little bit, you can feel free to do that. Then the great thing about this Reason Channel Dynamics e uh, compressor, sorry, is that it has a mix dry wet knob. And this is really beneficial when doing this technique. Um, I almost say it's necessary because it allows you to have a little bit of that wet signal creep in. Days of my life. I know the show what I wanted all the days of my life. Let's listen to it in the mix now. I know the show what I wanted all the days of my life. Needs a lot more reverb. So let's turn the compressor on and off and we'll hear the difference. 
You really need headphones on to hear this difference. However, you can hear the vocal is kind of still in your face a little bit more. And then when you turn it off, it feels a little bit washed out and spacey because we have so much reverb on it. Um, and that's how in my mixes, I'm able to achieve um, a large amount of space while still, have, still having a vocal present in the center. Additionally, then what you can do is on your channel, you can go in and you can add a short reverb. Sometimes having a short plate or short room on your vocal can help with it not sounding too digitized or dry and give it a bit more of a natural sound. So what's the entire point of doing this whole setup? When you add ducking on your reverb, it's going to help your vocal cut through the mix more. Uh, I find a lot of beginners, when I listen to their tracks, their vocals are mixed with a crap ton of reverb on it. Um, and the vocal is just drowning in it and it's not cutting through the mix still. So a way I found to compensate and have a nice big vocal while still having it cut is do a little bit of ducking and side chaining like I showed you here. All right, so the second way I wanted to show you how I apply reverb and other effects um, is a dry wet rack. Essentially what this allows is for increased control over how your effects are operating. Uh, you can see that obviously there's a dry wet knob. That's what all reverbs have. Uh, as you dial your dry wet down, you're at 100% dry signal. As you dial the dry wet up, you're essentially turning down your dry signal to bring in wet signal. So you're actually losing control over your actual signal. Now what a dry wet rack does is allows you to have the exact same level of your original signal and then bring in your wet signal. This is really helpful for automation, um, which I will show you when we get to automation here, but let's build a dry wet rack with my drop cords. All right, so we're gonna use this RV7000 plate spread preset. I may end up changing it, but we're gonna start with that for now as our dry wet rack. Once again, we're gonna make a combinator patch here and I recommend you save this and use it um, whenever you're implementing effects that will need automation and it can just be good practice to use it in general. All right, so then we're gonna hold down shift here when we drag in our line mixer. Um, and then we're gonna also grab an audio merger and splitter and then we're gonna combine these. Perfect. So all you're gonna need to do is open up your line mixer, the two devices, unroute that, route it into your uh, audio splitter. And then you're gonna have that go to channel one, that go to the reverb input, reverb output go into channel two and then you're gonna take your line mixer and route it to your from devices. Then flip your rack back around and you'll see here we have our original channel level and then you have the wet signal right here. So then you're just gonna wanna map these macros just for ease of automation and ease of control. All you need to do is click on your line mixer, click control one, target level, channel one level, which is going to control one. So that's going to be our dry. And then our second, we control two, which will become our wet. And then we're going to ch map that to channel two level. Perfect. And so what we need to do is make sure our dry level is at Unity. Now, when you set this to Unity, it's actually not the original signal strength. When you reset, you'll see that's where it lands. So we're gonna need to make sure this value is at 100. And if you're having trouble dial dialing it in perfectly, hold down shift while you dial it in and you can have more control. So now how do you make those chord swells out of it? Let's get into some automation. So first thing you're gonna do is hit edit automation. We're gonna draw in a little curve here. And now the great thing about this is because the audio is getting sent to the reverb the whole time, now we can just automate up the volume of the reverb. 
You can hear it's swelling, but it's not quite strong enough right now. So we're gonna have to add some extra gain to this and maybe increase the decay a little bit. Not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that result. So all I'm gonna have to do is now duplicate this automation out for all these chords. That's it for creating those chord swells. It's just one way you can implement a dry wet rack creatively to create cool sound effects. Next up, I'm gonna go over some general leveling techniques and tips. And then we're also gonna talk a little bit about the importance of mix automation to finish off the video. So let's get into it. So how do you begin leveling out your tracks? What I do is usually you wanna pick out your three core elements. It can be three or four, but usually in music, you have your bass, rhythm, and vocals or melody um, that is carrying your song. So it's important to know what you want at the forefront so you're not trying to push everything to the front. So in this mix, I have those chords, I have some bass, and vocal and drums. Just... So you can hear the chords, snare, kick, and then vocal are at the front of the mix. And then everything else is kind of sitting behind or part of those layers. If you haven't watched my video on production techniques, make sure to go check that out. I recently did one talking about how and why I do all these layers in my sound and how to blend them all together. Another thing to keep in mind while you're mixing is mastering. So you make your job easy for yourself or the mastering engineer to get the best result. When you're mixing, you don't want your peaks to be too high compared to your RMS value or your VU. So let me just show you what that all means on the meters. And we're just gonna go over it very basic. So we have our kick here in this drop. And you can see I went on to VU and peak mode on my big meter. And you can see the peak value is hovering around minus five dB. And you can see that the VU, if we're talking in dB full scale, which is on the bottom, then the VU is sitting around minus 15 to minus 14. So that means the difference between the peak of our signal and the average RMS is about minus nine dB. So that is a really good crest factor. Crest factor is the differing level between your peak and your RMS. Usually you want this to be anywhere between minus eight to like minus 13, 14, depending on what you're working with and how loud of transient that thing has. The larger your crest factor, the more problems you're gonna run into mastering and you wanna make sure to control the aggressive peaks enough so your mix doesn't have to slam into a brick wall limiter later on when you're mastering. This will help keep your mix loud and it won't sound too compressed. Now to reduce crest factor, you don't only have to use compression, you can also use saturation, clipping, so soft clipping and hard clipping to help it be more transparent, especially in an EDM and a pop mix using something like the soft tube saturation knob like I have here on this kick and then some soft clipping can help reduce that crest factor and help the kick still punch in the mix without overwhelming the limiter when we get to the mastering stage. A modern method of mixing, which I do frequently, is clipping your master bus to zero and not leaving a ton of headroom and then going into the mastering stage. Now, this only really works in genres where distortion and clipping sounds good. In a track like this, we can have lots of distortion and saturation and it makes it sound better. Finally, mix automation. Mix automation is super important when you are doing a mix because music is flowing and expressive. You don't want 
your mix to be stagnant. So you can use automation in ways like automating pan, for example, um, automating the fader. For example, on this vocal here in the pre-chorus, you can see as the dynamic of the song increases, I'm bringing the level of this vocal up. You think is I'm alive, just bring me some peace. You see it increasing here. Another reason that automation is great is making smooth transitions. So like I showed you before, making the transitions between the chords in the drop, automating reverb, using pan to create more of an interesting space in your mix, and adding feel and life to it. So experiment using automation and don't be afraid to have your volumes changing throughout the song to flow with it because music is not stagnant. So don't have your mix be stagnant. That's all my tips for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you join me next time for more tips and tricks. Remember to keep practicing, keep it simple, and keep making music. I'll see you all in the next one.